Hello again, it's uh, it's Paul Beckwith. This is a part two video. I'm talking about extreme weather events that we're experiencing across the globe. You know, here here we are in, you know, um, the, the, the latter half of July, and it just seems like, you know, we're in Armageddon in terms of, of uh, extreme weather events and, and climate. I mean, I just heard on the radio about 300 wildfires going on in BC. There's a lot of, there's towns that are actually being evacuated. Um, just uh, a couple weeks ago in Lytton, BC, it set a temperature record, then another temperature record the next day, reached 49.6 degrees Celsius on the Wednesday, and on Thursday the town was no longer there because there was there was a fire triggered. It thought it thought that it was from sparks from a, a train that had passed by in the region, but they're still investigating that. And smoke was seen on the outskirts of town, and within 15 minutes, the buildings in the town were all ablaze, and people were just scattering in all different directions to in their cars to escape the the fire. Okay, and it just reminded me exactly of. Paradise, California, just a couple of years ago. And uh, so there's becoming more and more people, call them climate refugees, that, um, you know, get their livelihoods, their jobs, their homes, their communities just completely destroyed and devastated and have to basically, you know, start over if they don't have insurance money to cover their losses. And their, their lives are just changed for, forever, you know, if they if they survive and you know whether it be the people in Lytton who lost all their homes and things to fires or the people in Germany along the river who lost all of their homes and communities to to massive flooding and I've just in the last video I explained that the ridge of the jet stream very persistent ridge not moving created the heat dome underneath which caused record temperatures which dried out all of the vegetation, um, which leads to wildfires. And some of these wildfires become so large, they create their own pyrocumulus, cumulonimbus clouds. And those clouds generate, uh, you know, those, those storms generate uh, lightning, lots of lots of lightning. There's been record amounts of lightning and that can trigger further storms. And it just sort of cascades and much of the West is, you know, as we, you know, it, this year and past year, last year and future years coming, you know, we spend more and more of our summers with these, with wildfire smoke, you know, which is a very, can be very, very dangerous, especially if you get the PM 2.5, the small particles. So you need to keep your windows tight and well, at least people have masks from the virus. They can wear them to filter out the smaller particles that are very harmless to to human health. Um, I was talking about, you know, the idea of the weather wilding, weather weirding, weather whiplashing. You know, the whiplashing event, um, you know, just think of, uh, you know, a few years back, there was record flooding in the Mississippi. Okay, and it really halted. The Mississippi River in the US is responsible for huge amounts of of, of ship traffic, uh, shipping goods, shipping wheats and iron and fuel and all kinds of things. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a huge life, you know, economic lifeline for the U.S. And, you know, it had the rapid, it had the ridiculously record flooding event, really cutting off a lot of the shipping. And then the next year, okay, uh, it had record drought, record low levels. A lot of the rocks were a danger to shipping. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers had to dynamite out rocks to deepen the Mississippi in places so it could continue to carry the traffic. So, and then the, the, the third year, it was back to record flooding. And the flooding in the third year far exceeded the record flooding that had been occurred in the, the previous, in, 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 in two years earlier. Okay, so this is weather whiplashing. So when you get the jet stream stuck, it depends on where you are relative, you know, are you in the trough of the jet stream or are you in the ridge? If you're in the ridge, you're gonna get drought, tremendous heat, 
no rain at all. And if you're in the trough, you're going to get torrential rains and flooding. And it just re requires a movement of that jet stream, you know, move the whole wave so that the troughs and ridges are in different places. And you can jump from one extreme involving loads and loads of water, way too much, to the other extreme involving, you know, the, the drought and arid conditions and then the wildfires, because in the years when you get huge amounts of rainfall, you know, the vegetation grows like crazy. It loves it, right? Grasses, shrubs, trees. So then if you get the jet stream shifting and you're in the trough, in, in the ridge and the arid record setting temperatures, you know, close to 50 degrees in some cases, it just dries out everything, scorches everything. And then, you know, any spark and the whole thing's an inferno, right? The fuel load is enormous because of the very, very high rainfall years previously. This is happening from season to season, but it's also happening within a season. So in California, for example, you know, in the winters, often we're getting even more rainfall than we normally would. So all of the vegetation is growing and growing. And then come the summers, we're getting much less rainfall and much higher temperatures than normal. And it's just baking everything to a crisp. And all you need is a careless cigarette thrown out of a car or a spark from a train or lightning, you know, uh, or, you know, anything. And you get this massive wildfire. And then the, these fires can get so large that they create their own clouds and their own weather system and their, their own uh, storm system. And those storms can then generate lightning and light fires elsewhere. Or the, uh, the fire is so hot, you get these fire nados where you have a tremendous updraft and that carries large cinders that are, and, and can throw them tens of kilometers or tens of miles away initiating other fires okay so this is happening um you know i mentioned that in in ontario just this just a few days ago we had about five or six i think there were seven events maybe a few dra down drafts five tornadoes okay um environment canada pegged a tornado going through the town of barry at ef2 based on the damage it caused. Okay, I did see a car or two flipped, but it, it actually sheer, sheared the top floor off some buildings and removed them and put them on the grass. So imagine you've got a two-story house, you know, the entire top story is just removed and placed on the grass next to the lower story. And, but, you know, so you think, well, this is a massive tornado to do that, but Building construction codes, I don't think were met in a lot of these houses in Barrie. The nails to secure the roof onto the walls was insufficient. So I think this is a case of a case of big bad wolf damage. You know, the we'll, we'll huff and we'll puff and we'll blow the house down, right? The three little pigs, uh, you know, this is a case of a house being built of straw. And actually, I'm not Actually, I shouldn't. That's, that doesn't hold anymore because people can build straw bale houses and they're very good thermally and they're very, very strong because you mix things in to hold the straw together. So it's not just made of straw by itself. But anyway, you get the idea, right? If the houses are, are very, very poorly made and, uh, you know, they're not even meeting building code and the building code is too weak. Uh, in the first place, then, uh, you know, these tornadoes can cause tremendous amounts of damage and it can actually be a very, very small tornado, like a, like any puff of wind and the house is gone sort of thing. I mean, we have to build, you know, much stronger infrastructure. Um, you know, I, you've probably seen, if you're on Twitter and you, YouTube, you've been following weather events, extreme weather events, you've probably seen that there's lately been a lot of China, uh, uh, tornadoes in China, some massive, massive tornadoes going through China and going into cities and, uh, you know, breaking all the windows in high rises and ripping pieces off high rises and, you know, causing probably 
tremendous casualties depending or not on their weather warning systems which i'm not too privy about but you know if those people didn't get advance warnings then um, i'm sure that there were huge numbers of casualties you know the people in germany um you know in some places they knew the rivers were gonna swell and flood but they had no idea of the se severity so you know, I think uh, the latest count, 160 people were killed or something. There were 1,800 people missing um, in, in, in Germany. Um, and Angela Merkel uh, just um, visited the flooded out areas and she was in total shock. And, and you know, the Europeans are saying, well, look, climate change is here, abrupt climate change. You know, the consequences are here. You know, we can't stall, we can't. We've got to take strong action on stopping the fossil fuel companies from just turbocharging the atmosphere for all of these storms and, you know, making the earth much less conducive to, to or life, to, 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 uh, you know, organize life or disorganize life in the case of humans. And then, but think of all the plants and animals that, you know, have to try to survive the, the, the heat wave. So, you know, these, these heat waves out in, out west, I heard that the spring, this cat is on the warpath, you know, things are going to start falling soon, and, uh, you know, I'm going to have cats flying across the screen with claws extended, you know, he's, he's chasing, I don't know, what's he's chasing, imaginary bugs or something, that's Shackleton the Explorer, you know, the Black Panther, Really, I think black cat cats are 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 they're different from normal cats. You know, they're 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 fighters or panthers. Their 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 ancestors are much more ferocious than uh, than than any other colored cat. It's just you know just an anecdotal opinion. Um, the crops. Okay, I've often said that the consequence that is going to hit humanity like a sledgehammer blow to the forehead is crop failures from abrupt climate change causing food shortages, global food shortages, and even famines around the planet. And then that will cause tremendous amounts of geopolitical conflict, which is likely, unfortunately, to increase emissions further still. So we have no choice. We have to pull carbon out of the atmosphere we have to slash fossil fuel emissions completely we have to zero them out we can't keep producing energy from fossil fuels and we need to deploy solar radiation technologies to cool the planet to give us a chance to slash fossil fuels to zero and to deploy carbon dioxide removal techniques and scale them up in order to, you know, get CO2 levels in the atmosphere back down to 350 parts per million or, you know, even 300 parts per million. You know, otherwise, the, you know, we're just, we're just on a roller coaster to, to ruin, basically. Um, and, uh, you know, in terms of crops, the heat wave in the western part of North America has done a number on crops in Canada and in the U.S. So I heard anecdotally in the U.S. that the winter spring wheat crop uh, was had you know has the worst yields in about 30 years and in Saskatchewan of course you know I saw rolling fields of canola and wheat and everything else on my cross-country tour and uh you know that the those crops are basically um they're 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 gone basically okay the the yields are terrible you know it's just too hot they're withering up and drying and dying in the fields and you know many farmers are saying it's not even worth sending out the combines to try to harvest the, these these crops because they're they're finito okay so you know, hopefully somewhere else in the world has bumper crops. Otherwise, you know, those those items are going to, you know, the prices will skyrocket soon. 
So anyway, thank you for listening. It's good to be back from my trip. Bye for now.